10.3. Operations on matrices. What does operations mean in algebra class? Order of operations. What are things you can do, right? What can we do to matrices? We can add them, subtract them, multiply them. We cannot divide them. We don't have matrix division. Yeah. So it is different from normal algebra, new matrix algebra today. So we have two ways to know a matrix with a capital letter. Uh, usually we use letters at the beginning of the alphabet, but capital letter means matrix. Uh, lowercase letter denotes the elements inside the matrix. A uh, capital letter at the end of the alphabet, like a capital X or a capital Y, would be a variable matrix. So capital letter beginning of the alphabet at the end is a variable matrix. So that means all the elements are unknown, whereas usually you have all the numbers determined. OK, lowercase determines the elements. So I can refer to the row. I would be the row. And J would be the column. The order of a matrix is determined by the number of rows and number of columns. Order, you should think size. So a matrix with M rows and N columns, we denote as an M by N matrix. And the order of this matters, uh, rows by columns. And there's this multiplication symbol in the between uh, because that denotes the size in some sense. Like how many elements there will be if you multiply the number of rows by the number of columns. Equality. Two matrices are equal if and only if any two elements having the same row and column are equal. Symbolically, we say matrix A is equal to B if and only if every element is the same in the corresponding location. Okay, so let's go ahead and do the first example. What's the order of the first matrix? This matrix, what is the order? The number of rows is two by the number of columns, the two by three matrix. Do you agree with that? Four by one? One, two, three, four. Four by one is the order. And we call this a column matrix. There's only one column. Right. The next one, three rows, three columns, three by three. And we call this a square matrix. Finally, what's the dimensions? of this one, or the order, one row, three columns, and we call this a row matrix. Not too bad, just find some vocab. Let's define our first operation on a matrix. We're gonna take a matrix and we're gonna multiply it by a scalar. A scalar is just a real number times a matrix. So let's say I have two times a matrix, like three, negative one, four, six, five, negative two, right? This is could be like two A, um, and the number is called a scalar. And it's called a scalar because it scales every element inside the matrix. So we then multiply three by two, to get negative one times two, four times two, six times two, five times two, and negative two times two. Are we okay with scalar multiplication? All right, pretty easy, right? Okay, I have three matrices. What's the order of matrix A? Two by three, what's the order of matrix B? And the order of matrix C? Three by three, okay. What's negative four C? Negative four times one, negative four times negative three, halves. Can I do this in my head? Is it six? All right, negative four times one half, negative two, 
a four times five halves, negative four times one, and negative four times negative two, negative four times one, times negative one, negative four times four. All right, scalar multiplication, not too bad. If we have multiplication, we can do the opposite of that. What's the opposite of multiplication? Yeah. <laughs> Multiplying by reciprocal. Yeah, or uh, if we're talking about something without an equal sign, uh, we'll just say factoring. Okay, so let's factor out one half. Let's say I don't like the fractions, so I could factor out the one half. So factoring out one half is close. Dividing by one half, which is multiplying by two. So I'm going to take every element in here and multiply by two. So let me write that. Uh, dividing by one half is same as multiplying by two. I'm factoring one half from every term. So I ask myself, what is one divided by one half? Or in other words, what's one times two? What is negative three halves times two? One half times two, five halves times two, one times two, negative two times two, one times two, negative one times two, and four times two. Not too bad yet, right? Let's add something else. We can add matrices together. We can add matrices that have the exact same dimensions or order, exact same. If it doesn't, we can't add them. So you just add the elements that are in the same location. So let's go ahead and add 2a plus b. Actually, do I want to do that? Or do I want to do something else? Let's actually do matrix algebra. Solve for the variable matrix X in the equation 3X minus B is equal to 2A. First thing I'm going to do is isolate X using matrix algebra, and then I'm going to plug in to try to evaluate it. We can add and subtract matrices, and we can multiply by inverses of scalars. If I want to get this by itself, what would I do to this other term? I would do the additive inverse of negative B, which is positive B. And I'm going to add B to both sides. So we get 3x is equal to 2a plus B. My next step is to multiply by the inverse of 3, which is what? Multiply both sides by one third to get x is equal to one third times 2a plus b. And what we'll learn in a second is I can distribute the one third, but I'm going to leave it undistributed for now. And now this is what I want to evaluate given a and b from before. One third times two times what is matrix A? Two negative two, three, one, three, negative four. So I'm just copying that from above here. Okay, plus matrix B, and I'll copy it. That would be five, negative two, six, negative two, three, five. What's the first thing I should do here? Distribute the two into the first matrix A. This looks like something we've done before. 4, negative 4, 6, 2, 6, negative 8. Now we're doing our first matrix addition. In order to do this, we add the numbers that are in the same location. I'm going to do, what's 4 plus 5? What's negative 4 plus negative 2? 6 plus 6. 2 plus negative 2. 6 plus 3 and negative eight plus five. And then we'll finally multiply by one third to get 
3, negative 2, 4, 0. How do you feel about matrix algebra? It's a little bit like normal algebra. There's some things that we can't do. For instance, we can't divide by a matrix. But we can divide by a scalar. OK, then it's asking, what's A plus C? And so to look at A plus C, we'd say A is a 2 by 3 matrix, C is a 3 by 3. And because they're not the same, say we cannot add these two matrices together. Any questions about this? Negative A and A are called additive inverses. That is, they're opposites because we'll get the additive identity. Once we have an additive inverse defined, we can subtract matrices that have the same dimensional order. In order to subtract two matrices, A minus B, we'll define this as matrix A plus the inverse of B. And so we just have addition again. And the zero matrix is denoted with a capital O, and it's whatever size we need it to be. So I could say, what's matrix C plus matrix with the zero matrix? What size would the zero matrix be? And the C is three by three, so this would be three by three in this scenario. What does that mean? One, two, three zeros, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine zeros because that's what I need it to be. And the nice thing is if I add this together, what do you think I get? Yes, the additive identity element, so it C is unchanged. Likewise, I could do matrix A plus the zero matrix, in which case the zero matrix has what dimension? Two by three, zero, 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 zero. And we get matrix A back. So what are properties of matrices? Um, when we add two matrices, it's commutative. I can flip the order of addition. Matrix addition is associative. I can add B and C first or A and B first and get the same answer. The additive inverse, they cancel each other out to make the zero matrix and if you add the zero matrix to matrix, you get the original back. What's the difference between lowercase letters and capital letters? Yeah, lowercase is just, yeah. So I said two things. I said it's a scalar and an element. So I need to not confuse you guys here. The difference between A and AIJ. This is a constant. This is an element in matrix A, capital A. So for instance, A12 is the first row, second column. What is that number? Whereas this is just some number, and it's always that same number. So in this case, B and C are just real numbers, uh, constants. And this is a matrix. So it's telling me that I can distribute the matrix A to both those constants. I have distributed property. What's the difference between that line and the one that follows after it? Now I have a constant and two matrices add together and I can distribute the constant CA plus CB. And then I have associate property of multiplication with scalars. So I could multiply B times matrix A first, or I could multiply the scalars first. And I'll get the same answer. If I multiply scalars first and then multiply by A next. Any questions about this? Let's do example three. So I'd like to use these rules to simplify first. How can we simplify this? I can distribute the one-third. I can. I don't have to. I can do something else first. The zero matrix times any matrix is itself. So it's equal to one-third 2A plus 7A. 
and we can let it disappear. Okay, I could distribute a scalar, that's fine. If I do that, then I would have one third times two A plus one third times seven A. Distribute scalar. What next? Yeah, I could multiply the one third times the two and then A next and one third times the seven and A next. Two thirds A plus seven thirds A. So that's called the associative property of scalar multiplication. Can I add these two terms together? I actually did. So in normal math class, you guys usually just write nine thirds A, right? But there's a step in between we're skipping. The step in between we're doing, we're skipping is it's two thirds plus seven thirds times A. I'm factoring out an A, which is the distributive property, right? So we're used to distributing A to two terms, but it's the same thing to go backwards. They're equal to each other. So I factored it out, which is equal to nine thirds A or three A. And that is three times two, negative two, three, one, three, negative four is equal to six, negative six, nine, three, nine, negative 12. So it's less work. We can use these rules of algebra to cut down on the work. Any questions about this? Yes. Yes. Because there's things that we can't do uh, with matrix algebra, which I haven't talked about yet because we haven't talked about matrix multiplication. And that's where things really fall apart. Okay, matrix multiplication. The product of a row matrix and a column matrix. So we can multiply a row by a column. And what we're going to do is just multiply the first terms of each. What's A1 times B1? And then we're going to multiply the second elements. What's A2 times B2? And you do this for all of them. So you get the end, AN times BN, and you add all of them together to make a single number. Add all together to get a single number. All right, I have a philosophical question for you. Is math discovered or invented? So why did I ask this? It's one of those things that whether math is invented or discovered, you should probably treat it as if you're inventing it. Okay, so for instance, we come up with these matrices and we're like, I would really like there to be a matrix multiplication. Okay, but when I create a type of multiplication that's never existed before, I have to create something that is useful. And through experimenting, someone might say, why don't you just multiply the elements in the same location? Well, it turns out it's not very useful. What ends up being useful is multiplying rows by columns. I just want to point out that why is matrix multiplication defined as it is? Because it's useful. Let's go ahead and practice this first one. What is two, three, five times one, four, negative six? Two times one plus three times four plus five times negative six. So when I multiply a row by a column, I get a single number because I add all those products together. What's my answer? I believe you. Negative 16. Any questions about this? This does have some geometric meaning that if you care about it, you should take linear algebra. 
<laughs> the product of two matrices. Okay, let's define the product of two matrices. A, let A be of order M by N and B order N by P. Then A times B is a matrix of order M by P. So the order of multiplication matters because the results will be changed depending on that order of multiplication. We multiply each row of A, each row of A by each column of B. Okay, so this is telling me I can multiply a two by four matrix and I can multiply a four by three matrix by it, for instance. Okay, so I'm gonna make up a two by four matrix like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, I'm gonna make up a four by three matrix. 9, 10, 11, 12, wait, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So why is matrix multiplication defined how it is? Or why do these need to match up? I'm going to multiply this row by this column. So in order for that to match up, I need the number of columns to match the number of rows. So I have the same number. Does this make sense? So columns must, I should say columns in A must match rows in B in order for A times B to make sense. And my answer is going to have what dimension? Turns out it's going to have dimension two by three. A, B, C, D, E, F. This will be my solution to that product. Are there any questions about this? Yes. How do I find A? It turns out A is equal to one times nine plus two times 12 plus three times 15 plus four times 18. Does that make sense? I multiplied the first row by the first column. So how do I find B? The first row by the second column. Yes, there's a lot of computations, huh? So I would have one times 10 plus two times 13 plus three times 16 plus four times 19. How do I find C? First row by the third column is one times 11 plus two times 14 plus three times 17 plus four times 20. And after I simplify, these are all single numbers, right? How do you think I will find row two by column three? How do I find F? I skipped it, I skipped it, right? Instead of D, maybe I should do D next. D would be these two, right? D is equal to five times nine plus six times 12 plus seven times 15 plus eight times 18. Okay, so I made these up and it's gonna be awful numbers. So I'm not gonna actually calculate all these. Let's try example four. So first of all, before we do all this work, let's make sure it makes sense to do the work. Does, can I multiply A times B? What's the dimensions of A? Two by three and dimensions of B? three by three. So I would really like the columns of A to match the rows of B so that everything lines up and I can multiply every number by every number. What's the dimensions of my answer? 
matrix. Two by three, yes. So what's remaining is the answer will be a two by three matrix. Okay, could I do matrix B times matrix A? B first would be three by three. Matrix A second would be two by three. And can I multiply them? Cannot multiply. So that tells me that matrix multiplication is not commutative. It means the order matters, right? A times B is not equal to B times A, like normal multiplication. So I have to be really careful about the order I multiply in, especially when I solve equations. Actually, let's not talk about it. Let's actually multiply these. Answer to this will be of, the answer is a two by three matrix. Okay, and so some people will call it matrix C, and then they could say C11, C12, C13, C14, C, sorry, that's not C14. I'm just counting. What should that be? What is this element called? Yes, 2, 1. Second row, first column, C, 2, 2, and C, 2, 3. Okay, so how do I find C11? It should be first row of A times first column of B. C11 is equal to 2 times 1, negative 3 times 2, 0 times 0. Any questions about that? How do I find C12? So this 1 corresponds to first row of A times second column of B. C12 is equal to 2 times negative 1, negative 3 times 2, 0 times negative 2. So do you see this pattern that we're going to end up with? Okay, I think your book goes through and then calculates all of those. I prefer to just do them in place as we go along. So I'm just going to write 2 times 1 minus 3 times 2 plus 0 times 0 as my first number. My second number is 2 times negative 1 minus 3 times 2 plus 0 times negative 2. And then my third number is going to be first row times third column. 2 times 3 minus 3 times negative 1 plus 0 times 3. Any questions about that? So can anyone tell me what I'll get for that next number, C21? It would be the second row times the first column. Second row times the first column is how I get C21. So that would be 4 times 1 plus 6 times 2 minus 1 times, how do I find C22? Second row times second column. That would be 4 times negative 1 plus 6 times 2 minus 1 times negative 2. So it's really easy once you know the sequence of things but it's something that you won't be able to come up with on the test if you forget how to do this. And what's the last number? Second row by third column. 4 times 3 plus 6 times negative 1 minus 1 times 3. And so my answer is what's 2 minus 6? 
negative four. What's this term? What is that? Negative two minus six? Negative eight. Uh, what's six plus three? Nine plus zero, right? I'm not saying the zeros. What's four plus 12? Negative four plus 12 plus two. 10 and 12 minus six minus three. And we get our answer to the product. Any questions about this? Okay, uh, you should memorize these properties of multiplication. That is, it is associative. So I can multiply B times D first or A times B first and get the same answer. I can distribute on the left and I can distribute on the right. But notice how the D stays on the right and the A stays on the left. That's mandatory. Wait, I have one minute. I'm gonna ask you two conceptual questions. Can I evaluate A squared? Yeah, can I do A times A? What's the dimensions of matrix A? Two by three. Can I do a two by three times a two by three? No, I cannot. These do not match up. No, cannot multiply. Can I do B squared? Can I do a three by three times a three by three? And my answer will be what dimension? Three by three.